After the conclusion of Season 3, Craig of the Creek closed out its Capture the Flag arc and started a new arc built around Kenneth's Cube, a mysterious item left behind by the original king of the other side of the creek, Kenneth. My name is Deep Cut, welcome back to Cartoon Universe, and today I want to discuss Kenneth's Cube, all the pieces we have so far, and how Greg got them, as some fans may be confused by some of the off-screen developments. Before we do, though, I want to remind everyone that we are having a live stream Q&A with the cast of Craig of the Creek on Saturday, April 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The cast will also be signing autographs all weekend long, and you can get your own autograph print of your favorite character using the Streamly link in the pinned comment down below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way down there so you don't miss the live stream. After liberating the other side of the creek and establishing friendly relations with the kids, Craig and the Stump Kids were excited to go explore new parts of the creek. With Xavier no longer ruling, the kids have dropped their costumes, more kids have returned from exile, and a new hierarchy is forming made up of new cultures and groups, as well as ones returning from their roots from before Xavier took his kingdom play too far. One such group to return are the Skater Kids, who gifted a mysterious cube to Craig for saving the creek from Xavier. They themselves were unsure of what the cube was, but revealed that it was passed down by older kids over the years as they left the creek behind to be high schoolers. The Green Poncho, now going mostly by Omar, recognized the cube from an urban legend. According to Omar, this cube is just one piece of a larger Rubik's Cube comprised of 26 pieces. When combined, it would reveal the location of a treasure known as the Heart of the Forest, something left behind by King Kenneth himself. Unlike Xavier, who used his resources to control people, Kenneth was noted as sharing his candy and snacks with friends he had genuine connections with, but that reached so far that it included all of the different groups on his side of the creek. Before passing the crown on to his sister, Kenneth would hide the treasure, this heart of the forest, and disassemble the cube he drew his map on, giving each piece to various friends, many of whom seemed to have been the leaders of different groups, giving them a sense of authority from the king. Like with the skater group, these cubes and the sense of authority that comes with them would be passed down from one kid to another as kids get too old to play in the creek and go on to high school. Kenneth hid other pieces around the creek, likely in unique or meaningful locations, and others still would likely end up getting lost in some way, only to end up elsewhere in the creek. Craig and his friends, of course, decided to set out to find all of the cubes and eventually the treasure, with Omar joining Craig's friends for these adventures. In the recent episode, In Search of Lore, Craig would reveal to have six pieces of the cube, three pieces we've seen him get and three we hadn't. He goes on to explain how he got those pieces, filling in the blanks, indicating that they happened off screen. However, the recent episodes may also be airing out of order, as they are airing in an order different from the ones originally published, though the latter three cubes may be adventures we never see on screen either way. The first cube, as we discussed earlier, was passed down as a token of authority among the skater kids, who were banished from the creek for some time, and it is lucky that it ended up making it back to the creek at all, let alone into the hands of Craig. The second cube was found at the King's Kitchen, a pretend kitchen that the kids have been playing at in the creek since at least the time of Kenneth where they started serving Kenneth specifically and would continue to do so for his younger sister and brother when they each took over as king. Like with the skater kids, the cube was passed down from one kid to another as they left the creek and became high schoolers, but unlike the skater kids, the authority that the cube bestowed upon its owner within the kitchen was being taken advantage of by someone unworthy of the role. Similarly to Xavier, the head chef Rick abused his power to turn the kitchen into a place where only he can thrive, limiting everyone to peanut butter and jelly-based creations. A lot of future cubes will likely make it to Craig in the same way, by Craig helping to dismantle the unhealthy power structures put in place by the people who abuse the cube's power and its authority. Following this, the gang would find another cube piece in the Moss Village, an RPG or Zelda-based group of kids who made their cube piece into a final treasure winnable with the fun quest to kill mosquitoes. After this, we get into stories that we haven't seen on camera yet, but as I said before, they may just pop up out of order, but maybe not. Omar did talk about more cube pieces being side quests, and with there being a total of 26 pieces, it makes sense that at least a few would happen off screen. 
The first of these is the Slug Races, which sounds like an event as opposed to a group of kids. This piece was likely hidden by Kenneth and found by a kid and thrown around the creek for years, or perhaps it was just some beloved trinket that had always belonged to the group that put the event together. Following this was the Ping Pong Pals, which I wish we got to see because that sounds like a fun group of kids, and a fighting system involving ping pong balls and paddles would have been hilarious to me. The Queen Bee of Hive City sounds the most interesting of these and raises a lot of questions. Considering how dangerous a beehive was for Craig's side of the creek, and how it took an entire council to handle the situation, I don't think this is a group of kids working on their own little bee farm that they have set up in the creek. But after the giant tube city one kid made for their pets, who knows. Following this, we recently got another episode where one cube piece managed to become a prize at a baby casino, where Craig would go on to bet all of his own own cube pieces for a chance to win it, and of course, walked away victorious. From here, this leaves a total of 19 pieces left to find, and while I can't say where all of them are, I have a few ideas. One episode coming up in this two-week batch is about Craig and his friends trying to find a cube piece at the creek's lost and found, and while I'm sure they'll get sidetracked and have their own great adventure, they will likely find a piece of the cube there, or even another more important item for solving this mystery, but more on that in another video. While this cube was broken up on Kenneth's side of the creek, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the pieces managed to get beyond the overpass. Perhaps one child that traveled all the way to the trading tree used it to make a purchase from Kit before returning home. At some point though, I imagine Craig will hit a dead end of sorts, perhaps with only one piece missing, the piece that happens to contain the marked spot of the treasure. This will be frustrating, but after so many years, at least one is bound to be impossible to find. However, Craig is very good with his map making skills, and because of that, I believe he will add in the last piece of Kenneth's cube himself by arranging the other pieces appropriately and using his map to fill in the blanks. This will lead him to the general area where the heart of the forest is, but he won't know exactly what tiny spot on the remaining cube map tile to explore, and that will lead to its own adventure in its own episode. In the episode, In Search of Lore, Craig tried to get in touch with Kenneth in order to get more information on what the heart of the forest is, but didn't manage to get the information out of him with the elders interfering. He did, however, watch Kenneth's favorite anime, Haru, King of the Forest, which inspired Kenneth's king persona. In the anime, the heart of the forest is a sentient body of water in the forest that says he can break a curse on Haru's friends, but only if he gives up the thing that means the most to him. In this same episode, we learn that when Kenneth was friends with the Elders, they had a four-piece friendship necklace with each of their initials on it. The Elders, being a bit younger than Kenneth, are still in high school, and just dorky enough to keep hanging at the creek, despite it being a social taboo for all of the other high schoolers. The Elders still have their pieces, but Kenneth did not. Earlier in the episode, JP harped on the possibility that the real treasure was the friends they made along the way. A funny joke, but one that made it clear to me that the treasure, the heart of the forest, was the thing that mattered most to Kenneth, his piece of the friendship necklace, because, as JP joked, the real treasure to him was the friends he made in the creek. But so far, these are just my theories. What do you guys think the heart of the forest is, and where the remaining pieces are? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to use the link in the pinned comment to buy your own signed print from your favorite Craig of the Creek voice actor. See you at the live stream.